Hello, my name's Laura and I'm here at Cats Protection in Hazelmere. And today I'm here with six kittens. Um, so I hope they behave themselves and they're not too naughty. Um, but we'll see what happens. Today I've got for you the fourth part of The Little Lighthouse Keeper, so if you haven't watched the first three videos, I would suggest watching those first. So today's story is called Birthday Surprises. The Little Lighthouse Keeper jumped out of bed. It's my birthday, he cried. The sun is shining and it's going to be a really exciting day. I can feel it in my bones, can't you, croup? Croop, croop, barked his furry fat dog. He ran to find Ray's shoes and polished each one with the furry part of his paws. Oh me, oh my, Croop, said Ray, shiny shoes for my birthday, thanks, old fellow. Croop, said the furry fat dog and thumped his tail on the floor. Just then the little turn shot in through the window. She landed on Ray's shoulder and dropped a fish on the bed. Oh me, oh my, little turn, said Ray, a fish for my birthday, thanks, old girl. Zit zit, said the little turn softly, rubbing her head against his ear. Then she flew out again. Ray climbed the spiral stairs. Croup followed him with a little jerky jump up each stair. They inspected the light and Ray polished the windows. There, he said, that's done. Now I can just, just do what I like today. It's my birthday. It's going to be a really exciting day. I can feel it in my bones. He ran down the spiral stairs and Croup lolloped after him. They shared the fish for breakfast and drank lots of strong tea. Ray's was in a cup and Croup's was in a saucer. Ray carried a deck chair outside and sat in the sun. He tied knots in the corners of his hanky and put it on his head for a sun hat. Then he shut his eyes, then he yawned, then he fell asleep. Croup lay with his hat, nose on his paws and slept too. After a long time, Ray blinked and woke up. He stretched and yawned. This isn't very exciting, he said sadly. I thought my birthday was going to be great. I thought I felt it in my bones. Just then, Croup's ears pricked up. They both heard the sound of a motorboat. Ray looked through his binoculars. It's Luke, he said. Good old Luke. He knows it's my birthday and has come to wish me many happy returns of the day. He looked through his binoculars again. Oh, he said, there's a great big box in the boat. It must be a birthday present. Perhaps it's from Auntie Millie, or Cousin Tim, or Tom, or Tubby. Perhaps they've all put presents in the box, or perhaps there's one giant present from all of them. I'm so excited, what can it be? He ran across to the edge of the big rock. Ahoy there, said Ray. Ahoy there, Ray, called Coast Guard Luke. He tied his motorboat to the ring in the rock. Then he lifted the big box out of his boat. This is for you, he said. Oh me, oh my, said Ray, I love opening parcels. Whatever can it be? Oh, I am excited. He pulled off the string and ripped open the box, then he stopped and stared. What's this, he asked. Dusters, old rags, a sponge, polish. They're what you asked for to keep the light room clean, said Luke. Oh, said Ray, oh dear. He was very disappointed. What's the matter, asked Luke. Were you expecting something else in the parcel? Well, said Ray, I, I just thought there might be something, perhaps something a little bit exciting. I thought someone might just remember what day it is. What day is it, said Luke. Well, it's Monday, the day I always come across to see you. I didn't mean Monday, said Ray. I meant a special day, a special day for me. You see, it's my birthday. Oh, said Luke. Oh. He was trying very hard not to smile because he knew something that Ray didn't know. Suddenly, he grinned a great big grin into his beard. I think someone has remembered you on your birthday, he said. Why don't you turn round and look over there? Ray spun round and gasped. On the other side of the big rock, a rowing boat was tied up. Four people stood there, waving and shouting. Happy birthday, Ray. Why, Auntie Millie, cried Ray. And Cousin Tim. And Tom and Tubby. What are you all doing here? 
we rode as quietly as we could so we could creep up and surprise you while you were talking to Luke, laughed Cousin Tim. And look what we've brought you, said Tom. It's a yummy picnic, said Tubby. They spread a white cloth on the ground and opened a huge picnic basket. Out came sausage rolls and sandwiches, crisps and biscuits, cheese and salad, chocolate fingers and cake, apples and oranges and six bottles of lemonade. Oh me, oh my, said Ray. What a wonderful picnic. I just don't know what to say. Let's sit down and tuck in, said Tubby. Come on, Luke, cried Ray. Come and join us. Just a minute, called Luke. There's something else for you here. He carried three more parcels over from his boat. A big one, a small one, and a smelly one, wrapped in a paper bag. Ray sniffed. Phew, he said, I'd better open this smelly parcel first. What? Well, full of fishy snacks. That's the little turn's birthday picnic, said Luke. Zip, 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 cried the little turn, swooping overhead. And what's in here, asked Ray, opening the small parcel. Why, it's full of meaty snacks. That's Croup's birthday picnic, said Luke. Croup, Croup, but growled Croup greedily and licked his lips. Now for the big parcel, said Ray, tearing off the paper. I hope it's not more dusters and polish. Why, it's cake. A very tall cake. A lighthouse cake covered in red and white icing. That's for your birthday picnic, said Luke. Oh me, oh my, said Ray, what a cake, what a picnic, what a surprise. You don't think we'd all forget your birthday, did you, said Auntie Millie. Well, said Ray, I knew something exciting was going to happen. I felt it in my bones, but I never expected this. That's enough talking, said Tubby, let's tuck in. Yes, let's, said Ray. So for a while, you can guess there wasn't any talking at all. That sounds like a good birthday, doesn't it? I hope you enjoyed this story. I've got my next book ready and I look forward to bringing it to you soon. Okay, bye for now.